Are we? <coughs> All right, we'll call this regular meeting of the uh, Lakeport City Council to order this Tuesday, uh, August the 16th. Uh, 2016. Thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you call the roll? Yes. Um, Councilmember Turner? Present. Councilmember Parlett? Here. Councilmember Bettina? Here. Councilmember Shield? Here. And Mayor Spillman? Here. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, if anyone would like to speak tonight on anything that's not on our council agenda, uh, there are forms on the back table that you can fill out and you can uh, come up here and speak to us. Uh, we can't come to a consensus or take any action on anything that's not on our agenda tonight, but uh, you've got us cornered, so fill it out, turn it in, now's a good time, and uh, you can speak to us about uh, anything that's not on our agenda. Thank you. Uh, tonight, I'd like to corner Panette Talia, our leader of uh, Main Street, to lead us in the pledge. Could you do that? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Bennett. Uh, tonight, do we have any urgency items? No. Okay. Uh, with no urgency items apparent, I will look for an acceptance of the agenda as posted. Mr. Mayor, move to uh, accept the agenda as posted. Thank you. Second. I have a motion and a second for acceptance of the agenda. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? We're good. Did you get that, David? Yep. Okay. Just to make it sure. Uh, next up, we have um, our consent agenda tonight. Uh, we have a rather large consent agenda. We have uh, ordinances, item A, waive ex reading except by title. We have item B, approve the uh, minutes of both the special council meeting of July 12, 2016, and the regular council meeting of July 19, 2016. Uh, item C, we have uh, approved the warrant registers of August 5, 2016. Item D, we have approved application 2016-020 for the annual Lake County uh, Fair Opening Day Parade to take place on September 1st. Uh, item E, we have approved application 2016-021 for the annual splashing event to take place on September 16th and 17th, 2016. Item F, uh, we have approved application 2016-022 for the 2016 Catfish Derby to be held on August uh, 26th and 27th, 2016. We have uh, item G, which is adopt a proposed resolution approving the memorandum of understanding between the Lakeport Employees Association for the period of August 16, 2016 through June 30th, 2017, and authorize its execution. We have item H, which is approved the appropriations amount of eleven million one hundred nine thousand really in sixty-three thousand <laughs> uh, for fiscal year 2016-17 for the city of Lakeport and adopt the proposed resolution. We should have rounded that. Uh, item I approve uh, the lease for fair parking at uh, 902 Bevins Court with the 49th District Agricultural Association and authorize the city manager to execute the lease. We have item J, approve the designated temporary disabled parking uh, in the 200 block of C Street between South 4th Street and C Street Gate to the fairgrounds from 4 p.m. on Thursday, September the 1st to midnight on Sunday, September the 4th, 2016. We have item K, which is receive and file the 2016 local biennial, biennial notice regarding the City of Lakeport's Conflict of Interest Code. And we have item number L, conduct a second reading of the ordinance of the City Council of the City of Lakeport, imposing transactions and use tax of 1% administered by the State Board of Equalization. That is a large consent agenda. Uh, Could do you, you repeat that, please? <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. Um, do we have any of these items that Council would like to pull for discussion? Uh, are there any items on our consent agenda tonight that the public would like to comment on? 
Seeing none, I'll bring it back to council for a motion, perhaps on the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to accept the consent agenda. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second on the consent agenda. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? We're good. All right. Do we have any? Oh, ah, we do. Perfect. No special order. Uh, Melissa Fulton. Uh, I've heard that name somewhere. I'm impressed. Did did you just snort? <laughs> wow. You know, ma'am, you need to say your name and for the record. <laughs> like I don't want that to me. <laughs> I feel like um, I just saw you, Melissa. I know it was a great meeting, and then I got back to the office and found out. They know behind my house was on fire. Yikes. So luckily, our pride trusted and true firemen and Cal Fire and everybody showed up and we're still there. So that was a good thing. Amen. Um, thank you, City Council, uh, City Manager, and all in attendance. Um, first of all, and this wasn't uh, what I put on there, so I'm going to kind of take a little extra. Um, the chamber had these made up and we handed them out at the concert in the park last uh, Friday night and so and there are some on the Main Street Association desk out here. Anyone with a QR scanner on their smartphone can scan that and it takes you immediately to the Lake County Chamber of Commerce event calendar. So it'll just be an ongoing thing. Um, any time, any month, any day. So I will leave some of these for you. Um, every year the Lake County Chamber, <clears throat> excuse me, has been in the habit of uh, forming an alliance with Bruno's Shop Smart, uh, our, one of our local markets, and they uh, do our add a dollar campaign to raise funds for the fireworks in Lakeport and the North Lake County area. Um, we did that again this year, and in addition, we sent a request to our membership. And uh, so I am very pleased on behalf of the Lake County Chamber of Commerce this evening to present a check to the city of Lakeport for $5,454.53 for your fireworks for this year. Wow. And uh, we have no reason to believe we won't do the same again next year. Thank you very much. So, can I hand this to Kenny? Would that be right? You can pass it to Kelly. Kelly will do it. I know. David, is that okay? <laughs> not to ask the sergeant at arms. <laughs> It was a late call, just as yeah. I was Melissa, well, so that's a wonderful us. amount. Thank you very much. Yes, You're thank you. Welcome. Very well done. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, citizen input, Tony Bart Barthel. Yay, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, uh, I just wanted to thank you very much. The city of Lakeport was uh, instrumental in helping the Lakeside Car and Boat Show schedule a big car and boat show this weekend. And uh, we estimate there are probably close to 2,000 just individuals there. We had over 200 pre-registered cars and boats and many more show up. But more importantly, I would say, well, what's the impact on the community? So I spoke with some of the local merchants. Uh, the Eng Lakeport English Inn reported that they sold six room nights specifically for the car show. Uh, the Anchorage and um, Skylark sold a tremendous number of rooms specifically because of the car show. Um, Friday and Sunday, Renee said we're off the hooks. Uh, Al's, um, the Old World Tavern said he had a record day. Um, we, Paul Brunick donated a patio boat and we had that out videoing the, the boats, which were going well over 100 miles an hour out onto the lake, which is just a blast to watch. The Lakeport Lions sold a tremendous amount of booze, oh, a tremendous amount of beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, but the best thing is, 
we raised over $7,000 for Operation Tango Mike, and I was able to deliver to Jimmy Cravens a wad of cash like this today, and uh, even the tellers at the bank were touched. So thanks to... Thank you to everybody, Chief Rasmussen, the City Council, all of Margaret, everybody in the City of Lakeport for all of your cooperation, waiving the permits, enable, enabling us to use the park. It, it was a, it was just an incredible event, and I have to warn you, we'll be back. All right. And it'll be a much bigger event next year. I already have timing lights scheduled for out on the lake to measure the boat speed. So. Perfect. See you next year. Hey, Tony, just, just from personal experience, and I've been with you since the beginning on this one, and uh, you did a great job. You and Dave Lakatos, and, and a big, I mean, a huge volunteer group. Um, everybody did a wonderful job. Probably any person that showed up to that event um, would never think that that was the first time that we've done that. So um, yeah, it, was it was great. It was effectively, in terms of the organizational staff, it was myself and Dave, and we had a lot of the quote-unquote old car guys for lack of a better description, say, you can't organize a car show on the internet. And, uh... <laughs> you can organize anything yeah. on the internet. And I, uh, well, remember, I, I run an online car show calendar that gets probably twenty to 40,000 page views a month, so... Yes, you can. It was great. I mean, our, public, our public works department had their hands full, but they did a great job. And, but, and they were great to yeah. work with. They were just super... Everybody, the community effort... To say this was two guys was nothing. It was this yeah. group of people, and everybody was completely enrolled in making this successful. And that was, there was not one person who was anything but fantastic to work with. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. 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 Uh, next up, we have under uh, public presentations a presentation from the Lake, Lakeport Main Street Association. I got to lean back a little bit now. Uh, presentation and donation by the Lakeport Main Street Association for the annual fireworks show at Library Park. And it's the Barbara Cadet Show. Uh, uh, you look how good at. Oh, you are there. <laughs> I told her she could. She was stalking you like a lion. I know, she does that all the time. Uh, thanks to Lakeport and City Council and everybody else. Uh, Fourth of July, again, was a huge success. Even without me, Panette did a good, Panette and Paul did a good job. And uh, we would like to present $1,000 for the fireworks because we did do that. And so, Margaret, do you want the money? Sure, I'll take money. Don't give it to David. Thank you very huh? much. Don't give it to David. I, I won't. I promise. Um, thanks, guys, for everything. And Tony did. He he. Facebook did it. Besides him and Dave, they did a totally awesome job. I was very very appreciative of everything they did for us for the car show. They did a great job. So. You're not going to see us now until the Taste of Lake County, which is going to be on Main Street, and everything is going along as planned per Kevin, per, uh, where to go, Mark, per you, yes. per yes. Margaret, it's going to be wonderful. And the Brad. 27th, and Brad, yes. Don't let him off the hook. I won't let him off the hook. And anybody that would like to help us do something, we would love to have your help. And thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, today at the uh, Main Street Board meeting, I think one of the concerns was is with the construction going on down there and the number of people that are going to be at the event, they wanted to make sure, Main Street Association wanted to make sure, rightfully so, that uh, it was going to be safe for everyone down there wandering around with, um, with uh, safety tape and a few holes here and there, or a few little rough spots. So we're going to make sure it's so. Thank you. All right. Next up, we have uh, a presentation, the Road Criterium Bike Racing, a presentation by Dave Grazzoli. Is that correct? Did I, yep. did I butcher it? No, not too bad. No, he's been known by, by other names, though. Yeah, I've been called a lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> Dave <and> Slade. <laughs> There's a 
like to thank you for this opportunity to talk to you guys about an idea that a local group of cyclists um, sitting in the audience uh, and myself have been discussing for a long, long time. And that's whether or not <coughs> we could put on a, uh, a bicycle race in downtown Lakeport. It's, uh, it's a type of bicycle road racing called a Criterium. They're held in uh, downtown cities all over the United States and all over Northern California every year. Um, and given the fact that Lakeport, the downtown area is being remodeled with the wide sidewalks and, um, and new streets, we just kind of felt like this was going to be the time to really try to do something special. Um, who we are uh, is a, we've actually become somewhat official this year. We call ourselves the Main Street Elite Cycling Team. Our primary sponsor is Main Street Bicycles at Lakeport, and we're going to be seeking a 501c3 status starting 2017. In addition to that, we're going to be registered as a USA Cycling and a Northern California Nevada Cycling Association registry team. The team is a, it's a local community team that's open to kids, juniors, all the way up to uh, adults and masters my age. Um, and members of the club or team or will be racing uh, throughout the year, both uh, road race disciplines, criteriums, time trials, and also a variety of different mountain bike races. Some of the members on our team now are current high school mountain bike kids from Kelsonville and Lakeport. Um, some of them are still in high school. Some of them have recently graduated. So what this is, is it's a downtown criterium. <coughs> um, a criterium, if, if any of you aren't familiar with it, is a, uh, is a closed course bicycle road race. Um, it can kind of be um, compared to a NASCAR race. They're held on short circuits, closed courses in downtown areas or industrial parks. Most of the uh, criteriums that our team attends throughout the year are held in industrial parks um, in the Sacramento area. One of them is held in, in a, a city park in Sacramento, Land Park, Willie Land Park. Um, but other areas that have the more popular races, um, City of Chico puts on a big stage race downtown. And the one that reminds me most of our area here is the video I'm going to show you in a minute to give you an idea of what a criterion is and what it looks like is the San Rafael um, Twilight Criterion that's held annually. Now, obviously, San Rafael is much bigger, much more money, and um, they've been doing it for a long time. Um, our attempt at this. Uh, obviously, it's going to be the first time for a brand new club, so it's going to be a very big undertaking. However, you'll see by looking, watching this short video, it's a promotional video they made in 2013, but this race just occurred a few weeks ago. In fact, what I've handed out to you is the actual race flyer that participants um, of the race would be looking at. It gives a very good description of what a criterium is and some of the, the prize purses that, that are given out and, and that sort of thing. So that being said, I'm going to play the short videos, give you an idea of, of what we're talking about. And in addition, to the, um, in addition to the bike racing that's going on, pay particular attention to the sidewalks and the downtown businesses in San Rafael, because uh, these criteriums are attended. I mean, we're, we're going to be shooting for, our goal is going to be to uh, get at least 300 riders here, which is going to bring all of their friends and family and so on and as you'll see in this video um, the downtown area where these races occur benefit um, greatly from the um, from the spectator aspect of it so.
again, if you look at the downtown area of that, um, the remodeled face of what downtown Lakeport is going to look like, they got an amazing venue for this. Um, new restaurants going in, the wide sidewalks. Um, sorry, it's, it's still playing videos. <laughs> Um, it's a good thing. It's we, we, we thought it was like drama music for. <laughs> <laughs> but that's working. Uh, it's working. Why we want to do this? Um, USA Cycling is a, na is a national um, sanctioning body for all amateur and professional cycling in the United States. Every time a, a team or a club is registered with USA Cycling, they, they encourage but don't require that the team put on a local event in order to promote cycling in the community. So that's one of the reasons. Um, Downtown criterions, as you can see in, in that uh, in that brief video, are, are very spectator friendly, but really exciting. Um, the guys that are racing in those are really elite athletes, um, especially when you throw into a course like the one you, I'll go over with you briefly right here. Our proposed course that we uh, we would like to try to pull off mirrors that San Rafael course in a way that it includes a steep climb in the back. Um, Steep climbs are, are not the norm in a criterium. Typically, criteriums are, are flat ground, which um, are, are high speed, and they're um, very fun to watch, but they don't make for as exciting tactical moves for the riders like a hill does. Because a heavier guy like me can't get up a hill as quick as a lighter guy, so it really encourages um, some really exciting racing to go on. Um, <clears throat> The other reason we, we want to do this is because I believe it's going to really showcase downtown Lakeport and the park. So all these riders um, that we're hoping to draw are going to be coming here from all over Northern California and the North Bay Area. Um, the date that we've tended, tentatively selected um, with and reserved on the NCNCA, incidentally NCNCA is the, is the regional governing or sanctioning body for Northern California that, um, that helps assist and deals with these races. It's the Northern California and Nevada Cycling Association, which this our geographical location puts us within that chapter. Um, <clears throat> so the other crux, so we, we've already got a date um, that we're hoping for, July 17th of 2017. They penciled us into their calendar very tentatively. One of the reasons that we did that is because the following day on the 7th or the 18th is another criterium in Runner Park, which is geographically one of the closest towns um, to where we were hoping to put this on. The reason we selected that date was because um, those of us who travel to races, um, the, more, the more we can get done if we're driving a long ways away, the better. So by, by pairing this with another close by race, we're hoping to increase the amount of people that would come here first, attend this race on a Saturday, on a Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, possibly spend the night in our local motels either Saturday night so that they can go to Runner Park the next morning or stay Friday night to be here early for the race on Saturday morning here, um, which again is going to you know, bring an influx of athletes to town for uh, at least one night, possibly two nights. Um, it will give us the, the opportunity to showcase some local wineries and breweries. The San Rafael Criterium, they have a, uh, um, a beer garden that's right next to the course. Um, you got to have a ticket, and it's limited in scope to where it can be. But they have a local craft brewery that has a beer garden in there, which we kind of, you know, we're hoping that we maybe we can work something out with either O'Meara's or um, Kelseyville to have a local brewery with a beer garden, um, local winery that sponsors the high school mountain bike team, Six Sigma. We're hoping that maybe they could get involved and, and have some local wineries um, and vendors there in the park on display while this is going on. And again, just to try to draw, draw a large crowd of, um, I'm referring to them as athletic tourists, people that are coming here that are, that are fit, they, they eat well, they're not undesirables, so to speak, that we're going to be bringing into town to not only race in downtown, but have, a, have an opportunity between the races to hang out at the park, maybe go fishing and see something, come to a place that they maybe never have uh, never been before. Um, again, my win, uh, tentatively, July 17th, I don't know what we have to do to reserve that date in the city. We actually have to pull a permit, but um, that's the date we, we, we're really hoping for just because it pairs so well with another nearby um, event that will increase the attendance. I think I already see Melissa back there looking at her calendar. I think it's July 15th. Uh, Saturday, Saturday, July 15th. 
Is it? Yeah, the 17th is on Monday. 2017? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Interesting, too. Was there a reason for the paperwork for you? Okay, sure. The where, the where we um, where we see this over here, we got a nice diagram um, of the downtown area, kind of what what we envision happening. Um, Museum Park up here on Main Street would uh, would serve as the the start finish and the timing and scoring. And incidentally, this is all this is all extremely official. We've got uh, where we'd have to have timing and scoring officials from USA Cycling with all kinds of super duper cameras and. If anybody's ever watched the Tour de France where they have the, the referees on the motorcycles, they're going to have guys on, on motorcycles chasing these groups around as um, motor referees, basically racing around town all day long. So the start finish, um, we're, we're envisioning starting right there in the middle of Museum Park, headed south on Main Street with a right-hand turn at Martin and then another right-hand turn on 4th where they're going to have to climb that relatively steep hill. <coughs> and then, then there's going to be a long, fast descent on 4th Street a hard right-hand corner around the fire department, another hard right-hand corner back onto Main Street again. Each one of these, each one of the different classes of races that's outlined on that, again, that's San Rafael. We're just kind of trying to mimic what they've done, um, the, the classes that are going to be there, but you can see that each one of those classes races for a set period of time. Um, so there's going to be lots of action going on all day long. Um, our close-up view, Museum Park, you know, um, we kind of envision the first or the second and third street between Forbes and Main. We could reserve for some of the, hoping to get some, some actual pro cycling teams to come up and have their pits there. Um, as well as, like I said, in the park there, we'll have, um, um, we're considering having a, uh, our high school mountain bike teams um, having a booth there where they um, can rent um, warm up trainers. That's kind of a thing you do before you do it is, is guys get on stationary bikes or warm-up training that you put your race bike on and pedal and get your legs all heated up. Um, so possibly having the high school mountain bike teams from Kelseyville and Clear Lake involved in that. Again, our beer wine, beer wine garden in there somewhere and some, um, some other local vendors. Um, again, kind of the whole, the whole draw to this thing to, to again, mimic the, uh, the the race in San Rafael is going to be the participation of all the businesses on Main Street, have their tables and chairs out on the, on the new white sidewalks, you know, having some lunch or a cocktail or whatever while all this action is going on. Um, how we're going to accomplish this, our cycling team is going to, uh, is going to be responsible for obtaining our USA Cycling and NCNCA event permits. Those organizations are also the ones that provide all the insurance that the cities are going to require. Something they do day in and day out at city venues, hundreds and hundreds of times a year. So it's something everybody's very familiar with. So we don't anticipate any any risk or, or insurance issues having to do with that. Um, we will have people assigned, hopefully, to work closely with somebody within the city to help us um, make this thing happen. I do know from prior to this team being formed, I was involved because we didn't have any local cycling teams. <coughs> a couple of us that were actually doing any road racing. So my son and I actually, for two or three years prior, were on race teams in the city of Chico. Um, we raced with two teams out of the city of Chico, one of which puts on the largest stage race in all of Northern California, which is the Chico stage race. Um, because we were members of the club that put that on, we had an opportunity to actually work as volunteers. It's kind of on the periphery, get some idea of what it takes. The one thing I can tell you is that the jurisdictions that do do this issue these cycling events on a parade permit. So basically a day-long parade permit. So basically going to be doing a parade on that thing all day long is what um, most other jurisdictions call it. Um, <clears throat> the, 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 the course has to be cleared of all vehicles. So again, the city of Chico, we would have to go out, bag all the parking meters, notify people that no vehicles on the street past a certain hour, and we have to come back out super late at night with a tow truck and towing cars that are on the street out of the area. So you kind of just some real major things to deal with. Um, other than that, traffic control during the event, because all the all the streets are going to have to be blocked off and controlled or handled by the club that's putting it on. So that's going to be all our responsibility. Hey, Dave, I have a question on that. The um, 
there, I noticed the streets are all barricaded. So is that something that you guys do through your association? Yeah. Okay. So we need to close the streets, but you guys handle the barricading it. Yeah. Yeah, and on that particular course in San Rafael, they use a they use a lot of barricade. I mean, those that orange fencing that you yeah. saw, they use like miles of that. That's not common for every, you know, something like in Chico, they they'll just put up um, like yellow caution tape oh, okay. on a lot of it. Some of them will use that. I mean, I could I kind of just thinking this out for a while. We I could see us using that fencing on the only the center section of Main Street where the start finish and all the because. When people, when the riders would be coming out of the, the right-hand turn by the fire department, is where the sprint finishes are going to occur, and that's where the melee typically happens. It's because yeah. that's where the. I mean, that's the and you want to do the critical part. areas. <clears throat> yeah, so that's where you don't really want to have people stepping off the sidewalk into the, in, you know, into the street. But beyond that, the backside, um, they typically we would have volunteers essentially at every intersection. Advising any traffic that might come through there, how to how to get around or controlling the corner so that vehicular traffic can come through. But it's, uh, it, it happens all the time. We're I've already been seeking the advice and counsel of the race director for the Chico stage race, a guy that is very very experienced in this. He knows this inside and out. He's a pretty good friend of mine, and he's gonna he said he's gonna he would come up and, and help and advise on how to make this happen as soon as possible. Um, and at this point, the only thing I would ask of the city council is if there was any way that once this gets rolling, it would be like a single point of contact we could deal with that could help us navigate the permit process and what other, whatever other requirements um, there would be to make this happen. Um, and any advice you guys have, whether there's any, uh, I noticed there's a lot of people handing out money tonight. Um, and see, <laughs> one of the things that makes that, that, makes that San Rafael um, show is so big is if you look at the pro the pro one two class on there they're giving away big big money in the pro class obviously i don't expect us to be giving away that kind of money but bicycle dudes will come a long way to win that kind of money and that's what's really gonna that's what that's what's going to be the thing that'll put this place on the map is if we can you know come up with uh, you know an eye-catching prize pot especially for a pro class that's going to that's going to divert people. They're going, whoa, whoa, what's this? A brand new crib with a big hill in it, and they're giving away a bunch of money to win. Let's go there. So, um, yeah, that's it in a nutshell. That's what we're hoping to be able to accomplish. Do you have any questions? Well, the it says a uh, twilight or sunset, but yet it starts at like 1:30 on a Saturday, and we're closing down all the city streets and everything. And, you know, we're already catching a little bit of flack right now with uh, closing down sidewalks and things like that and I I mean I can see you know people coming in and, but it, it might be a little bit of a of a sell right now after what we've been going through with the downtown right now um, but the numbers I, I don't see any like attendance numbers or anything like that on here I know you got like six thousand dollars worth of prize money and uh, that's all well and good does that come from the entry fees or well, for, <clears throat> first, I just want to point out that that flyer that I gave you is in the San Rafael right, right. Sunset. I'm personally, there are some guys in our group that think we should also do have a sunset criterion. My personal, my personal feedback to the rest of the guys in my group is that's we probably should stick with just a daytime criterion that starts at eight or nine in the morning and goes to four in the afternoon. The the criteria we're looking at in San Rafael. Um, is really, really a big, it's a big production, both um, athletically and um, show. It's a, it's, a, it's a show. It really is a show. They have, a, you know, the, you saw the Umbrella Girls, and they had the huge elaborate podium. The guy that they had actually announcing that race is a guy named Dave Toll, who announces the Amgen Tour of California. So that, that, that is a big, big, big production. And the reason they do it at Sunset is so that when that enormous class of professional cyclists comes out, they're doing it under the lights, and it's this, you know, you know fireworks. And that's, if we ever get to that someday, that would be awesome, but I mean, I, I think initially this is probably going to be a daytime event. Um, the only real concern is going to be heat. Hopefully, if, if, this, if this actually ends up happening and we end up with one of these July days where it's 105 degrees, that's it's, it's not going to 
it's not going to make for a very memorable event for the guys that come up here. That's that's really, in my mind, is the only thing that you know lead it towards a sunset crit when things are starting a little bit later, and then you've got the nighttime activity like you would for Oktoberfest or anything else like that. The only thing that's going to be closed are the streets. All the sidewalks and everything else are wide open to pedestrian traffic. Yeah, the thing that concerns me is like six blocks of no parking, and oh, yeah. and if you ever come down here for the the library park thing uh, on Friday nights, there's everybody's parked everywhere, including all the way up and down both sides. And if they're expecting to get a bunch of people out to see this, I'm kind of curious. About the yeah, I, I don't know. We just blocked off every parking spot in library park, and I haven't heard one grape yet. So, and that's hundreds of parking spots. So, I I, I think we'll be fine. And you just have to train people. I mean, they'll take a walk, a few blocks. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. During during a fireworks show, I mean, if you don't get your vehicle down here by 4 p.m., you're well, parking a mile away anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So I I, I think it I, I I'm I'm for it completely, 100 percent, 100 percent for this. It's just concerns that I'm just yeah. projecting yeah. out there that questions that need to be asked later on, like you know, when you close all this down, where's the overflow, and you know, you're going to have, um, you know, the high school down the former high school or whatever down there that kind of thing it's just a concern i have but businesses are saying well how is anybody going to get here we've been hearing that a lot lately so i just want to get that out there in front so that you guys are thinking about that all along the way sure good point i appreciate that and dave uh, councilman parlett's pretty versatile but he's not going to be an umbrella girl for you <laughs> really I'm just yeah i'm just telling you. it's not his thing actually i kind of really i'm not i know i really, really want to see marty in a skirt oh man that's what I was hoping for. I had, of, that hill. <laughs> I had a couple of questions. I didn't know that there was any of them. Okay. Um, how many different how many different levels do you run? Uh, I mean, obviously, you're doing different different uh, waves of you know qualifications or different people, different groups. Uh, how many different ones are there? Well, there. I mean, it really depends on the club that's putting it on. Um, <clears throat> And I think some of the fees that the club or the sponsoring agency ends up paying has a lot to do with how many of those classes are. Mm -hmm. um, again, that, uh, that San Rafael is kind of limited. In cycling, you've got five categories. Um, that's how it starts off. A category five rider is a beginner. Category four is a beginner who's had, um, who's been in 10 mass start races. So once you, the only way to get from a category five to a four is you have to uh, have raced in 10, have started 10 races. Okay. Uh, once you get to category four, that's kind of, so five is beginner, four would be equivalent to a novice. Threes are intermediates. Um, that's where everything starts to get a little off, quite a bit more serious. Twos and ones are essentially pros. Um, the only thing that's really missing out of that is they're going to get a special license and uh, an extra upgrade point to be considered an actual domestic pro. And then within those categories, um, when you get to the age of 35, they start breaking those down into master's categories. So you would have a master's category, um, age group say 35 plus, um, three, four, and then a 35 plus cap one, two, pro one, two, three. It can be pretty big. Um, we, I think our, our goal is to try to keep it as limited as we can, but still maintain attendance. Um, the Roner Park Criterium that I referred to earlier this year, 277 entrants. Which is why I'm I'm thinking that if we can if we can shoot for 300 riders combined with that nearby race, I think it should be doable. The average of all the surrounding criteria is is around 220 220 to 250 or 60. Um, but I think I think if we promote it well and, and you know we'll, we'll we would go out and you know make a video like that, make a promotional video of riding the course and make a nice. We've got some pretty talented guys, computer guys, video guys. Eric Schlange, I'm sure, is going to be all over this, make a nice promotional video, put it out to the cycling community. Yeah. There's a huge opportunity. Is the average distance, distance it says the San Rafael one is eight miles, is that pretty typical? That's a point eight. Oh, point eight. I was going to say, it seemed like I'm, I'm thinking yeah. eight miles is still kind of a sprint for a race. But yeah. it's, and and okay. coincidentally, this course, this course method that we've you know, roughly mapped out here is. Yeah. is Point eight with about a six or an eight percent climb up that hill on on uh, on Fork Street, so it's gonna yeah, it, it could be pretty awesome. Actually. So it's just once around. That's no, time. so the way they work is the races go for anywhere from 
30 minutes for the beginners, the category fives and the category fours, and then when you get into the, the upper categories, the pro one, two, and threes, they can go as long as 75 minutes. Um, but what happens is, as they're doing laps around this course, the officials are calculating the lap times, and then what they're doing is they figure, okay, at this rate, they've got 25 more laps to go before they reach the time limit at the end of the race. And so they start counting those down, and when they get to, say, nine laps to go, then they start showing the riders a sign, a lap card that says nine to go. So now the riders know, okay, they've been riding for so long, the race is supposed to be an hour long, and now they're down to the last nine laps. So the race is rolling essentially in, exactly in at 60 minutes. It might end at 61, it might end at 59, depending on what happens um, during the race. Um, the other thing that's actually, is, is I failed to mention, that makes these things even more exciting is, these races are not only just a race for the first guy across the finish line at the end of that 30, 40, 50, 60, 75 minutes, but um, <clears throat> in, intermittently throughout the race, they have what are called pre-laps, prize laps. Um, so what will happen is at any, at any random time while this, any one of these races is going on, um, somebody will, one of the race officials or something, you know, somebody that's putting the race on, starts ringing a cowbell and the announcer will uh, start yelling pre-lap. And that means whoever the first guy across the finish line on that lap is, wins a prize. That prize can be cash. For example, that cheap, the big crit they do at the Chico stage race in the pro race, they've got premiums on $1,000, which, I mean, it, it, there's all kinds of team tactics and stuff that go on in the bike race which means there may be, you know, teams are trying to get one or more of their guys to accelerate off the front and stay away, and then the rest of the group, you know, may or may not try to catch them and, and make them back part of the group. So usually what will happen is if, if one team starts to dominate this race and they're getting too, out, too far out in the front, somebody will ring a bell and call a pre-lap for 100 bucks or a new pair of sunglasses or, or beer or wine. And what that does is somebody in that group will want to win now, they know that they're not going to win the overall, but you know they might win some money. So then what happens is that will cause the main group to accelerate, catch the group of guys that had gotten off the front, and mix the whole thing back up. So that goes on throughout every one of the races. And those, you know, sometimes, depending on the crowd, they'll pass a, a hat around the crowd and collect money. And they'll have a premium lap for however much money ends up in the hat. It's called the crowd, it's called the crowd premium. So especially on some of the more competitive things, they'll pass a hat around and you know, they, you know, hundred bucks, two hundred bucks for a guy that, you know, like I said, isn't going to win, but he's in there and he thinks, man, I could beat all these guys for one lap. Hat lap. And gets bragging rights. Yeah. You know, I, I've been told stories, Jeff Kramer has told me stories. He, he's known guys that travel all the way around the United States racing criterion just to win premiums, just to win the cash. And, the cash and price has never won an overall race anywhere, but can consistently go out and, and just win the premiums. So. Well, David, this is uh, it's exciting. Um, I know that uh, the ride around the lake that we've got, you know, that Rotary puts on, draws in a huge crowd. Um, we're trying to get in out at Westside Park. We're trying to get in some... Uh, uh, beach handball courts, which is uh, going to be in the Olympics here pretty soon, and they're hoping to, you know, maybe, you know, have some sort of a, uh, um, a, you know, national type competition here. Uh, there's not very many in the United States. Uh, this type of thing would fit in well with that. Like you said, with the new downtown and stuff, it could be uh, really a nice fit. I love it. I love. It looks so exciting, and I love that the families and kids get pulled in as part of it. Or as spectators, and that's one of the things you saw there. Usually, at all of the downtown criteria that they have, they always have a kid, they always have a kids race where all little kids from town they just show up there. But there's no charge, of course, and they that's a great put, idea. put them all up on the line, and they just do one, they just do one mile. That's good because I can see their mothers towing them the second or third time they have to go. <laughs> and actually, there's other ones that are now like the. the the San Rafael crit that they do now, they also incorporate the run. So we'll have the junior race, and then they'll, they, they're, they're drawing a bunch of runners that are doing basically a one lap, one mile sprint around that course. They end up with a bunch of, they end up with a bunch of runners. Again, that's that's a big Hollywood production. If we can if we can pull off a fraction of that and just kind of follow the rest of it, I think it could be amazing. Just takes a start, right? It does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right.
Just one mm -hmm. comment, Dave. If you want to get a hold of us, we could set up a meeting with Public Works, and sure. and everybody else that that uh, would potentially have to uh, address concerns and kind of let you know what what you need to do as far as the permit process. Perfect. So just if you want to get a hold of me, I can set that up. Fortunately, I think we have plenty of time at this point. Yeah. Well, it's never too soon. So we've got a lot of business to deal with, too. Right. Yeah. So right. we'll be glad to start early working with you on that. Good. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you. Come. No? Okay. Thank Once you. Sure. Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it. You, you can take it. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm a long, tedious writer. We'll give, you, we'll give you a complimentary entry for free. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't want one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be happy to do some announcing duties. Yeah. I told you, we got a number of yeah. Although, I don't know. There's a there's a, a beer premium in there somewhere. I need to get out there I'm much more of a long, tedious, slow writer. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, Jeff stuck in the back there. He's been trying to get me to come out. Too many, too many meetings, but that's going to end your group. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, thank you, Dave. Thanks again. Yeah, that's very nice. All right. We're going to move on to uh, item number six, which would be council business. And uh, it says police lieutenant, but I'm assuming, Chief, you're handling this? Yes. Yeah, this would be uh, looking at a uh, new resource officer uh, for the uh, school. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. Mayor and Council, what you have before you tonight is a request to review and approve and direct the city manager to sign an MOU contract between the city of Lakeport and the Lakeport Unified School District to provide for school resource officer services during this fiscal year. Um, as you guys know, the school and the city um, both uh, budgeted for this position uh, prior to our adoption of budget for this fiscal year. So that's already set in place. At this point, we just need to formally approve uh, this uh, memorandum of understanding and contract, which will serve as the contract for that position. I need to mention that uh, that there's been a, a change, a, a small change in the contract. Uh, since the copy was sent out to the public council for this meeting. And if you look at page three, bottom of page three under e-funding, and I just want to mention for the public, there's copies of this contract on the table in the back because it is different from what was sent out in the uh, original public notice. Um, but the change is simply that um, when the school board approved this last Thursday, they added a sentence to the bottom of section E which says this amount will be prorated based on the actual start date of the officer. Um, we had, when we wrote this uh, contract, we had uh, intended to uh, have an officer starting on the first day of school back on August 10th. However, with, with uh, an officer injury, that didn't happen. So at this point, we're, we're tentatively scheduled to have an officer over there on October 1st. So it would be prorated based on that date. So that's the change in there. Everything else in the contract is the same, and uh, we again asking that the council uh, consider this and uh, if approved, correct the city manager sign the uh, MOU. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, council, any questions of the Chief? Or yeah. no questions. Okay. I'll open this up to the public. Anyone like to comment on a new resource officer at the school? Potential of such? I know. <laughs> Seeing none, I'll bring it back to council for discussion or a possible motion. But yeah, I would say Chief and I have been talking about this for a long time, and, and I know that uh, Superintendent Hagberg has been working uh, extensively with Lieutenant Ferguson, and uh, very amicable uh, forward progress, and I'm, I'm glad we're, we're finally here and the resources are available, and the officers are available as well, because we haven't been able to do that for quite some time. So, and I, and I have it on good authority that the new assistant principal is pretty excited as well. Uh, don't quote me on that. So. <laughs> but uh, if there's nothing else from any other council members. And that, that officer would be working for us in the summertime when school's out. Uh, I would, uh, Mr. Mayor, move to approve the attached MOU and authorize the city manager to sign. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? 
We're good. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm glad Dave gave a good presentation there because we had a rather short meeting tonight. That's one way to look at it. Just, just kidding, Dave. Um. Oh, it, it, it's coming back, trust me. Yeah. He's still yeah. lying away. Yeah, it's, yeah. Dave does not forget. He's going to put you in tights and he can go around the block. That's what's going to happen. Okay, well, we'll move on to uh, City Council Communications. Um, I'll start with G. Uh, nothing tonight, thank you. Okay. Kevin. I'll just put a quick plug in uh, for August 31st. Uh, upcoming here in a couple weeks is going to be our second public outreach meeting for the uh, Front uh, Revitalization Plan. Um, this is going to be a pretty exciting one. We've taken all the public input and survey data uh, from the previous meetings and uh, they're going to, our design workshop, the uh, consulting firm that we're working with is going to be presenting a number of different alternatives uh, for the community to consider and take input on. So, um, What was that date again? August 31st. It'll be at 6 p.m. right here in the council chambers. So please mark your calendars. It'll be a pretty exciting one. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Other than that, uh, downtown project is moving along. Um, one of our biggest hurdles, uh, we ran into some issues uh, with some uh, direct burial cables from PG&E left over from some past projects out there. Uh, PG&E has been on board with us the last couple weeks, uh, meeting directly with uh, Granite and city staff. Uh, we think we've got them all uh, squared away. Uh, the big wild card now being the, uh, the fires on the other side of the lake. Uh, both PG&E says that they're committed to uh, meeting our timeline there, so we shouldn't see any additional delays on their part. So. That was a nice hurdle to get across. Yeah. It does look nice. It's uh, it's coming along. It's just uh, it's a process. I uh, appreciate all your good work on that. Perfect. I was just going to mention that Cal Fire asked us to use the park, the our lot on Bevan Street on Bevan's Court for the event. So I told them, well, we had committed it to the fair, but assuming if they're still there, the original fair, so we're yeah, safe. Yeah, they can't stop the fair if they're gone. Yeah, anyway. so, but apparently it looks like things go well. It should be gone by then. Good. That can give us more. I picked on you the whole meeting. You got nothing. <laughs> okay. I always get a good smile as I pick on you. Jenny, I see you hiding over there, but I'm going to get you anyway. Okay, well, thank you, Mayor and Council members. Um, I'm finance department is going great. I'm getting acclimated, getting a good understanding of the systems, and I've really enjoyed working with staff. We've got a great staff. So I think we're making progress. We're starting our prep for the annual audit. Um, and I think that's about it. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Are we No report. No report. Councilman Parda? Well, um, I was fortunate to attend the uh, Shakespeare in the Park, and um, um, it doesn't really matter what I think. Everyone else that was there loved it, and they thought we should do it again and again. Uh, and I thought it was great, too. I mean, but what I think is a lot. But the point is, is that I thought they had a lot of challenges. They did a great job. But the one challenge that a lot of us noticed there was the, uh, I don't know what the formal turn is, the Nikes or whatever. But then I heard from uh, one of the kids that works for me that they had some kind of uh, device that I talked to Doug about um, that was non-invasive and and that actually, I guess they cut those things to move because of some kind of electronic device. That's what I heard, allegedly, and they moved further down, away from the benches, so that was kind of interesting. That was a little bit of a distraction, but it was kind of interesting that it was, uh, it was a, a tremendous event. They did a great job. Uh, Richard Smith, uh, he said that he's going to do it at least one more time. Hopefully, it'll all work out, but it was, it was great, and, and to see all the people there, um, I really had a good time, and it was great to see Shakespeare right out here on the shores of Cleveland. It was great. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Chief. Um, well, the lead division, uh, our last meeting before our annual conference is Friday up in Arcata. Uh, Council Member uh, Turner and myself will be attending that. And uh, it'll be interesting to get in some 50 degree <laughs> weather. Um, beyond that, just um, still, still at the fairgrounds uh, with uh, the CAL FIRE uh, morning briefings and doing, doing whatever we can to help support. Um, all the, the fire personnel and uh, but for those that have not noticed uh, the fairgrounds once again is repopulated with uh, um, 
probably a couple thousand fire personnel at this point from, from Cal Fire, and hopefully uh, they'll make enough progress tonight, tomorrow night, that uh, they can start tearing that down and and get back for the fair. Uh, the fair manager, uh, Debbie, uh, if, if Cal Fire does remain there for an extended period of time right up to the fair, we'll be asking for support from the community and maybe uh, some volunteers, because uh, we're gonna have to uh, do some very quick redecorations and move a lot of items back into place to get everything to start on time, especially for the kids. And uh, so we'll probably try to do as much public announcement on that as we can. So uh, beyond that, Thursday night's the last uh, kick in the country, or not last, a day kick in the country kills you, and I think Friday is the last concert in the park. Yeah. That's about it for me. Thank you. Councilwoman Turner. I'm looking forward to this Friday's uh, division meeting. We are going to be touring Arcata, looking at uh, low-income housing options and projects. So I, I think that that will be very exciting. Uh, looking forward to Taste of Lakeport, the Port of Main Street Association. That will always be a lot of fun. And. Uh, Additionally, I'd like to commend the county, um, the uh, first responders, as well as the sheriff's office, uh, for, specifically for the public information officer, Lieutenant Steve Brooks, worked as the PIO both for sheriff and for the county EOC. And uh, I really appreciated the ongoing presence of the Lake County OES Facebook page and Twitter. It helped me to, even though I was in the office, to, to really kind of understand what was going on out there in a, in a real-time manner. I was very thankful for that, as well as uh, our local media, Lake County News, and the periscoping that they were doing at media briefings, which enabled people from all over the lake who are all concerned about the fire event to be able to link in in real-time to hear the announcements uh, from the, the local agencies. So I just wanted to give a kudos to that response. Yeah, I wanted to thank Chief and staff for putting on a really uh, successful national night out this year. Our block party style um, night out was a great success, and the kids and the bikes, we had uh, a couple hundred people at least, and so job well done. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we thought it was great too. It was the best one we've had. Yep. I'd like to echo that too. Um, it, that was a wonderful night out. It was um, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of effort put out by your department and, and a lot of the volunteers and stuff. And uh, it was uh, really, really uh, well received. I think by the public. Um, one other thing, uh, you mentioned the low-income housing. Uh, the uh, I felt so bad uh, this last week. We gave a quote, which I believe was a replacement house to the Habitat for Humanity or some roof trusses for the Valley Fire, <laughs> and they have since lost their office over there in uh, Lower Lake, and uh, it was it was within a week of us giving them numbers to try and do a replacement house over there. So hopefully they get back on their feet pretty quick. Um, other than that, I just wanted to mention um, Friday um, with uh, Lakeport Police, we're gonna, some of us will be heading over to Windsor. Was it Windsor? Yes, sir. Uh, Windsor to uh, see two of the uh, officers, young officers graduating and coming on to uh, Lakeport Police. Uh, take a little few, few months to get them up uh, up and going, get them properly trained, but uh, uh, it's uh, it's all coming together. And, uh, anyone that would like to attend that, that's on Friday. I'm going to do a red eye over there and a red eye back so I can uh, still get work to end. But, uh, other than that, I will call it right at 7.